Whenever I have my friends over at my house, they often like to stop in front of this little build out right here filled with my ceramics and kitchen items. So I wanted to go through my favorite functional ceramic items. Before I even started making ceramics, I was collecting a ton of ceramics through thrift stores, through markets and stuff. So I just want to show you what I'm currently loving. Let's start all the way up here. So I have, look how cute this thing is. Kelly Burnett is one of my favorite ceramicists. And yeah, I just wanted to have this in my kitchen because I actually don't have that many functional ceramics by her. I have a lot of, um, I wouldn't say shot cheese, but just not like cups and mugs from her. I have this right here, which is a matcha set from Little Match Studio. This is, oh my gosh. So she goes to my ceramic studio and oftentimes like ceramicists are the most generous people that you'll ever meet. And oftentimes whenever you like something, um, ceramicists will do like trades and stuff. So anyway, I saw this color and I messaged her right away and I was like, oh, this is great. And she's like, if you want it, I'll, um, I'll trade you for something. But I love this color and I love the shape and I love how light it is. And yeah, whenever I make matcha, I use this. This is the platter that my sister gave me. She found it at a thrift store for $14.50. And um, she had her fruit in it for a while and I really like the glaze situation in here. So I traded her for something else. I don't really remember what it was. Betsy Carter, so last Christmas, I traded her a couple boots for this platter right here. And oh my gosh, I love it because it's just a work of art. The glaze work is stunning and she's been doing ceramics for a really long time. I'm excited for the holidays to come because now I have all these like beautiful platters. I actually made one, one sec. So in my day-to-day -day life, I don't actually use that many of my ceramics, but I made this and I'm super excited about it. It's an ear and then you can put all your stuff in the grooves and it took a really long time to make. It's actually Jason's idea who's like, I want to make an ear. And um, I was like, yeah, it'd be funny to make it into a platter. It'd be funny to make it into like a slow feeder for cats or like this and that and this and that. And then eventually he's like, why don't you just make it? So then I made it and I love it. I had so much fun making it. It's like really heavy. It's just been such a joy and it's bigger than my head. I'm super excited for dinner parties and potlucks because I want to bring that and like put a bunch of dips in there. All right, I have a lot of mugs here on this shelf and I had to put away a lot of them because it was just taking up too much space. So I'm just gonna go through my favorites. These are the mugs I reach for the most. This one right here is by an artist named Jason. I don't know his last name and he's not interested in selling his stuff and I even talked to him today about it and he said maybe in the future he'll let me know. But it's this artist um, who's in his 50s. He's been doing ceramics since his 20s and um, he's actually a lawyer and so Maybe that's why he's like, oh, I just want to keep it a hobby. He traded me this for one of my couches and I love it so much. He makes a lot of stuff out of porcelain and oftentimes whenever he makes stuff, he'll just like leave it outside on the dumpster, like right outside our uh, studio just for people to grab and take home and stuff. So I have a few of his plates too. Robin Watts is such a fantastic ceramicist. So he made this. He actually gave this to me because um, Jason bought this one to match some of his other pieces um, out of the Robin Watts collection. <laughs> and he's just like, oh yeah, I want to give one to Christine too. So we have semi-matching cups or mugs. And I really like this because it stores a lot of coffee. This one I know I've talked about before. This is a zebra print mug from Little Snake. Um, also from someone from my studio that I go to. And yeah, I love it so much. I don't know how he did this, but um, it's raw and glazed and the texture is so nice. And even when you hold it right here, you feel like you have a nice grip on it. I feel like if you made this in just like a tall tumbler, it would be great too. Oh, okay, so Jason made a ton. I mean, you can probably see it all here. We have, let's see, one, two, three. Or, so like 13 of these cups just on the shelf. Jason Van Wyck made it, made a bunch of these beautiful cups. This one's my favorite one because it looks like chocolate like in Willy Wonka when he um, pauses and takes a bite out of the candied teacup. I just imagine a chocolate cup taking a bite out of it and it's just, it's just so delicious looking. But yeah, this is 
Jason, as you can see. I really love it when he signs his name like this because, I mean, the maker's mark is fantastic too, but there's something so personal about having a hand written or hand pressed signature. This is kind of a cop out, but I do have a lot of Heath ceramics, kind of like a mass produced situation, but it's not like mass produced in a way of like Corel plates or whatever, or like um, plates from Walmart. It's mass produced, but there's still some handmade touches and they're from Sausalito, so I don't know. The shapes are so classic and I just really like it, so that's why I have a lot of Heath ceramics and also a lot of vintage Heath. This is Sanu. Oh my god. Hi. I have a lot of bowls from Jason, my boyfriend, because that's how we met. We met in a ceramic studio. Um, we were friends for a really long time and then we started dating after like a few months. But yeah, we met in a ceramic studio. It's like the classic rom-com way to meet up, right? He went through an era where he made a lot of big ramen size bowls, which I really like. Let's put some of this stuff back. I love having mismatched bowls and plates, but the only thing is that stacking it is kind of hard. This is a collaboration between Jason and I, so he threw it and then I glazed it. And it was meant to be a lot more bright than this, but I think it kind of got kind of burnt out in the kiln. This is our collaboration, or what I like to say, collabble. I found this at a thrift store pretty recently, and I thought it was just so funny. It's like Memphis design era. Um, it's from Mikasa Maxima, super strong fine china. So that was funny. So. I got it right away because I was so stoked on it. So this is just a little bowl that I really like and I will never get rid of. And it's thrown by this guy named David Ball who is one of the studio owners of a studio that I went to. And um, so whenever you take a class at a ceramic studio, obviously the instructor will show you how to throw something and then they'll show you how to trim it and glaze and all that stuff, right? So he went and did this whole bowl as a demonstration and I was like, can I keep it? And he was like, well, this isn't like my work. It's just like a demo. I'm like, yeah, but it's still work in my eyes, right? So he's like, yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, you can have it. But he's like not stoked on it because it's not like his actual work. But I love the way he signed it because it's just, here, you can see it here. It's just his name. So whenever I go to like a thrift store or something like that, I always look for a handwritten signature just because it feels more intentional to me. So in the plates department, that's where I go for more mass produced things because plates are kind of hard to make um, in ceramics because it takes a lot of surface area and it takes a long time to come out of the kiln and sometimes there's warpage and all of this stuff. Like the one plate that I have from an actual person that I know is slightly warped and yeah, I don't think she'll be stoked if I talk about it here, but most of the plates that I have are just like, these are all Corel, which is like a very Asian household thing to have. You guys remember these? It's like a very Asian household thing to have. I have a lot of Heath plates because again, plates are hard to make and I just like Heath a lot. I like the colors that they have and I love how they feel and yeah, they're pretty sturdy. Okay, bottom row here. These are all the bowls, which is probably the most reach for category. I think this is one of the first pieces that I got from Robin. I really like this. It fits in my palm and it holds like one serving of rice. So I can have this and a bunch of like side dishes and stuff. And this is just how I grew up eating with like a little bowl of rice or in Vietnamese you call it jang. And you have a bunch of side dishes and you just kind of like have your personal bowl of rice. Ooh, this is a collab bowl once again. Lisa Van Wyk, who is Jason's sister, painted it. And yeah, it's like citrus and clocks. I really love her work. And yeah, so I had to keep one for myself, you know? <laughs> this is the first thing that I ever got from Jason in 2019 when I met him. This is like before we started dating. And I remember he had been doing ceramics for maybe three weeks, not even that long. And I remember looking at this on the shelf when it came out of the glaze and being like, wow, this is so beautiful and so well done. And the walls are so nice and thin and I just really like it. And then he came in and he was like, oh yeah, I made it. And then I was like, wow, this is fantastic. And he's like, well, you can have it. Yeah, it became my favorite bowl for a very long time. It's still one of my favorite bowls. This is from my neighbor, Dacia. I actually use this one a lot because it's a little bit bigger than like a rice bowl. It's like a soup bowl size. 
I love how it feels and the glaze is kind of matte so I thought it was really cool. I use these small dishes a lot for sauces and stuff. I made this little one right here. This one is from Obi and I think it's a really good size. It's like a palm size. I love the texture of it. I actually have a lot of his pieces. He makes some really cool bottles and I have those like on my nightstand. This one is from my friend Guan who passed away and for a while there I was just like maybe I should keep this in a safe place so that it doesn't break so I have like a lasting memory of him but then when I thought about it I was like well no he would want me to use it so that's why it's in the current rotation but I really like this. High walls, great for ramen. I just think it's cool that he made something that can last for thousands of years if I were to take care of it. But I really just want to use it and have it in my rotation. He used this glaze called Celadon, which is an ancient glaze. And yeah, I just think it's so beautiful. And it's the only piece that I have with like really high walls. So I really love this. What else do I have here? I have some more Heath dishes or bowls. This one has a little handle on it and I got this at a yard sale for like $10. I think another reason why I collect a lot of Heath is because I know that I can get it again. A lot of these pieces are one-offs and handmade by friends so if they break then like I possibly won't be able to get them again so um, yeah there's a sense of urgency to it so I feel like that's maybe part of the reason why I reach for a lot of Heath stuff because I know that if I break it I don't have this like shame within me you know what I mean this right here is a bowl that I made for my friend Khan it's like a water drop situation yeah I even signed it I don't know if you can read that very well but it says Christine like my signature 23 which is 2023 obviously for Khan and he's gonna pick it up the next time he's here which is hopefully in november if you live in la you know about cat and roger but they have some fantastic stuff this is thrown by roger lee who is a ceramicist i think he's also a ceramics instructor or teacher or professor and then his wife paints on this and this isn't a good example because she's done some like really crazy designs let me try to find one i have another one right here that i'm using as like the water bowl for the cats this is beautiful and she painted that. This is so cool. This is from Sam who's an instructor at the studio that I go to. She just walked up to my house one day with a bowl full of candy and she was like this is for you and it was filled with I forget like fruit candy and she was like you can keep the bowl too and I'm like gosh this is awesome because I really love the bowl. I just love how it looks and I love how it feels. Yeah so those are just some of the ceramics that I have in my current rotation. I think I should do this pretty regularly because I rotate this very, very often. I'll leave some of uh, the people who make ceramics, I'll leave their info in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.